Uh, Yakir, I'm 45 years old. I teach equal opportunities and discrimination prohibition in the university. I'm also a non-practicing lawyer, among other things. I'll explain what a cryptocurrency is. I prefer to talk about Bitcoin because the rest are Tahini. But first we'll have to go back for two or three minutes to coins and gold. When mankind evolved from hunter-gatherers and started to develop larger settlements, they could no longer trade pigeons for donkeys and peppers for canoe boats. It simply didn't work anymore. And so they tried for a long period of time and found different solutions that could transfer value well, and that will store value well for us, etc. So there were many things, among them salt, but let's jump forward to gold. Gold was a very good solution, because it had many inherent qualities that were right for that era, answering the needs of the time. It's very difficult to acquire, it's rare, you can divide it almost infinitely, it's almost impossible to forge, it maintains its value, it doesn't spoil, you can hide it, store it, and transfer it easily, and so on and so forth. Let's continue to coins. When the sovereign came to be many years ago, 2,000 years or more, when grand kingdoms arose, when large governance began, the sovereign needed a different tool, and the sovereign started to use money and coins. Today, the sovereign, the federal government of the United States, or the euro, or the shekel, the sovereign only creates about 2 or 3 percent of the money. About 97 to 98 percent of the money in the world today is created by banks. However, banks only create the money for the loan. They do not create the interest that they demand for the loan. And so there are many consequences that must be understood from a wider perspective, and it's a matter that can be debated for hours sometimes, but I'll try to abbreviate. What banks create is a lot of money that on the one hand is extremely inflationary, because let's say I had 100 shekels or 100 sheep or 100 cakes, suddenly there is 2,000 of them. So my money is worth less, without a doubt, all of our money is. But worse than that, they inevitably cause war and rape and evil across all of humanity for the purpose of gaining money that doesn't exist. Because if now the banks loaned a thousand shekels on the hundred shekels I gave them, they didn't create the interest that they want. And then we're all struggling, all of the time, all of the world, to pay back debts. Money today is nothing but debt. Behind it there are immense debts, non-returnable, irreversible, impossible to pay back. Never. But we're all struggling, all of the time, besides running away from the diluted money and investing it in stocks, in Nike, in growth, in growth. For whom? Growth my ass. We are also fighting to pay back an interest that doesn't exist, that money isn't there in the world. It's mathematically impossible for everyone to return it, say they were able to. Let's continue to alts, or Bitcoin, because all the rest are tahini. 99% of the alts, the alternative coins, are tahini and will die as tahini. Today, all of the countries in the world are leaning on the dollar, while the dollar leans, not on nothing, like people say. The dollar unfortunately leans on 19 trillion dollars, non-returnable debts of the American government. But much more than that, hundreds of trillions of dollars, debts, mortgages and pensions of the American public, 250 to 300 million people. All the money in the world, shekel, euro, whatever, is backed by the dollar. And the dollar, as we said, is backed by insane debts. Bitcoin, unlike the sinful, inflationary money that demands an inflationary economy, destroying, raping all of humanity, that requires infinite spending and constant transactions of money, and is an impossible pursuit for repaying debts and for investment and growth, not to stay in the dollar because it's losing value, who wants to stay in the silly game of musical chairs. Bitcoin is money that, first of all, we know from the start how much of it there is. 
Is $150 million for an F-35 that the IDF bought a lot of money? Who knows if it's a lot or a little? How many dollars are there in the world? Nobody knows. Not because, let's say, someone could count how much the federal bank that up until six months ago printed $80 billion a month in quantitative easing, a trillion dollars a year. But let's say we could count it. Nobody knows, because the financial institutions and the derivatives, it's just incomprehensible what it's causing. In Bitcoin, you know at every given moment how many Bitcoins there are. There's some order. Furthermore, Bitcoin is a deflationary coin meaning that its production is gradually decreasing. If it started five years ago with 50 bitcoins per 10 minutes, right now it's 25 per 10 minutes, in over a year it'll be 12.5 and at some point it'll end. Meaning, if a standard currency, fiat dollars, goes like this and today it's literally like that, Never ending, there's infinity, like sand across the beach, the Ponzi, the crazy pyramid of money today. Bitcoin goes in the opposite direction, like this until it ends. Meaning not only that its value isn't decreasing and diluting, on the contrary, not only that it doesn't encourage constant spending and avoiding the actual currency because there's nothing in it, but it's true real estate that's incredibly rare, impossible to counterfeit. Why is Bitcoin a good replacement for money and gold? And what are the inherent qualities that are important in it, unlike the crazy Ponzi that exists today? To start, it doesn't have a sovereign. Obama, for example, who needs two and a half trillion dollars right now for health care, or Bush Sr. or Jr. to finance wars in Iraq or Afghanistan. If they need it, the Federal Reserve prints it. There's no such thing anymore. There's no sinful central body, an insane mechanism that needs... There's money and or real estate and or a wonderful internet mineral and or an international language of freedom overriding borders and shattering sovereigns, or and Moses of the third millennia without any doubt that frees us from Pharaoh. Everyone, me or Obama, can create it at every given moment. We'll be under the same conditions. Each one of us can buy Bitcoin at any given moment as per market price for the same conditions, me and Obama. There isn't more for Dongner, more for banks, or less for us. Bitcoin isn't redistributing the chips on the table, but it straightens the table. Bitcoin will not bring forth the eradication of all the injustice in the world and all the poverty, but it will cause the dismantling of all the horrendous barriers and the profit of a select few. Banks, big brother, weapon industries, sovereign, an insane mechanism that rapes humanity with borders and wars that divide and conquer. Bitcoin will make it so that a man in Thailand, eventually, and in Africa, and in Italy, and in Israel, and Netanya will work for the same salary, using the same money, without barriers, without the dollar being worth more than yen or a Thai currency. Bitcoin will enable complete equality and freedom. Bitcoin will render useless, is already rendering useless, all of the mechanisms of all the sovereigns. Do I need banks? Are you crazy? Here's my bank. Your bank charges for electricity, salaries, bribes. Excuse me, I'll be right with you. It'll take two and a half seconds. I'm a man and I can't do two things at once. But if your bank pays, the cost of the banking system in the world is insane. It rapes the planet. It's a total waste. Salaries for millions. Insane salaries. Money for electricity money for buildings, for real estate, for every transaction on Visa or whatever. Here's my bank. I don't pay for managers, for clerks, for real estate, for electricity, for brinks, for nothing. Instead of a mechanism, I have a protocol. Instead of the new stock exchange behind me, which was supposed to cost between 150 to 180 million dollars, this crazy thing, Right now, the cost amounts to $430 million when the Israeli stock market is in fact dead in terms of volume and interest. While well, all of that spent on the managers, on the expenses, on the corruption, on the electricity, on everything, can be done on the blockchain of Bitcoin, on the wonderful and amazing blockchain of Bitcoin or XCP or Ethereum, free of charge and for fees that are nothing divided by nothing.
Bitcoin will enable and enables a protocol for everything, for intellectual property, for decentralized internet, for money, for worldwide elections or for communities. Bitcoin renders useless the entire sinful, insane road bump that's called the sovereign and its giant mechanisms that create crime. I'm a jurist, I'm a lawyer, I teach law at the university. Mechanism, a powerful sovereign creates maximal crime. Why did the Soviet Union collapse and still is collapsing? Why did Detroit go bankrupt? Why did I, as well as Leah Rabin and Sergei, when it was illegal to hold dollars in the 70s? Not only did we hold dollars in Israel and in the Soviet Union, but we were willing to work and do anything to hold dollars. The sovereign will fall, must fall. All of its mechanism, from Alon Hassan, from airports, from a gigantic and insane mechanism of superfluous government ministries, from Eud Olmert, from Arison, from, from Bendov, from Donkner. Everything that goes on today is insane, and everything that holds it together is an economy that is deliberately inflationary, deliberately insane creating money like sand across the beach for the benefit of a select few of a gigantic mechanism of banks of huge industries and bitcoin will free it bitcoin is truly the moses of the third millennia bitcoin is a decentralized software over hundreds of thousands of different computers across the planet in order to turn Bitcoin off, you'll need to destroy all the internet that exists. And even if all of the internet is destroyed, today there are private decentralized networks in many places over the world that will keep it safe anyway. If all the internet and electricity in the world disappeared, maybe it could destroy Bitcoin. You can't destroy Bitcoin. Furthermore, I heard you ask Ariel and others here about the strength of Bitcoin or how much you can harm it, etc. Bitcoin is unstoppable. It's not dependent upon the will of one sovereign or another. There is no importance at all in the long run, if the regimes of China will want to or not. It doesn't matter whether the Federal Bank of Russia or the United States will support it or not. Bitcoin was born in every human community in the world. It grew against all odds, against laws, against persecution as a way of looking at people as crazy to the max. Up until 18 months ago, you would say Bitcoin and people would have no idea what that is. And those who did would laugh and go nuts. Today, there isn't a bank that doesn't address it. There isn't any self-respecting country, Spain, California, the US in general, Russia, China, Holland, England, that doesn't deal with laws that are more supportive or less supportive towards Bitcoin. Not the Caesar of Melmac, not Napoleon, not Genghis Khan, not the US, not Russia, no one in the world can stop Bitcoin. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then we win. The truest thing in the world about Bitcoin, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. What Bitcoin enables and will enable the world is something that has never been. The revolution of Bitcoin is greater than anything that has ever happened in mankind. There isn't anything that I can compare to Bitcoin. Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever he may be, will get a Nobel Prize for anything in the world, economy, doesn't matter. You name it, he'll get a Nobel Prize for it. Bitcoin will be bigger than the internet, than Google, than Facebook, than the wheel, than E equals MC squared, than anything you could think of. Satoshi Nakamoto will be more famous than Michael Jordan and Jesus. Bitcoin will be the backbone of human society in the world for everything. Money, real estate, language, propriety, elections, organization, communities, exchanges, everything will be on Bitcoin. It's the only real estate, the only one the only one in the world. Now, why are people talking, for example, about gold? Gold today has lost its relevance immensely. The inherent qualities that were good in it in the past are no longer viable. Today, gold has two inherent qualities that are worth very, very little. It's good for electronics a little bit, etc. And it's good for jewelry. 
But that's not the reason why China ships safes full of gold across the ocean that weigh I don't know how much and bought an enormous percentage of the gold in the world in recent years. They're doing it for real estate, for... It doesn't have it today. Can it move across the internet in a second? No, Bitcoin can. Does it belong only to whoever holds it? Or does it depend upon the regime where they are? Can it be stolen? Is it anonymous? Ariel told you Bitcoin isn't completely anonymous, but with Bitcoin you can create complete anonymity with coins that follow it, and also without coins that follow it. Zero cash, all the ideas, still today. True. The only real estate that you can have just in your head, not even in your head, that's only yours, that is typhoon resistant, tax resistant if you like, resistant of, of theft, of Daiichi, Fukushima Daiichi, resistant of radioactive radiation, of Syrian missiles, of real estate destruction, resistant of time, is Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin will change the world. It'll change the world in an incomprehensible way. It'll be a surge unlike anything we've ever seen. Bitcoin will blow off and destroy everything. It'll eradicate the economic system as we know it today. It'll destroy the banks. It'll destroy the sovereign. It'll destroy the tax systems as they're conducted today. There will be communities. There will be a certain payment. Are you asking if it'll destroy the IRS? VAT, social security, health tax, appreciation tax, twist tax, vehicle tax, parking tax, passport tax. The answer is, of course it will. What a question. What a question. It'll destroy the sovereign. Bitcoin will demolish the sovereign. There's no need for a sovereign. A sovereign today, why is there a need for it? Money keeps us safe and so on. It's all, it's all. It's got nothing to do with anything. We used to have carrier pigeons, Indian campfires, then there was the post office, today there's the internet. In the past, to learn something you needed, everything changes. The world wants liberté, freedom. Freedom also means to decide whether I drink Coke or coffee, or if I eat meat or if I'm a vegetarian. Freedom also means to decide whether I use a crazy Ponzi currency, a pyramid that exists as sand across the beach that's called the dollar, or a currency that mankind decided upon, or a certain people that I believe in that's called Bitcoin. I will decide with which currency to pay or invest in, and more than that, since most people regard Bitcoin only as a currency, in my view the currency is the minor thing here, Bitcoin is a real estate, an amazing mineral unlike anything else. It's a language. It's much more than a coin. It's also a coin. It can also buy a falafel. So what? 